Shout out to everybody out there watching worldwide. This is BYC Gaming. Bring your controller. We are back for a beautiful day at City Field. Mets hosting a three-game set against the 36 and 19 Los Angeles Dodgers. As we get a look at the Mets back in black coming out onto the field for today's game. It's going to be a tough one. We got Shohei Otani on the mound. He'll also be back and clean up in this game. And he'll be facing a Mets starter who has been very superb this season. David Peterson, 4-1 record, 10 starts, 3.86 ERA. Clean that up a little bit, but still very solid considering the opponents that we have taken on early in this season. 48 Ks on the year. You see that strikeout rate. Let's see if he can add to that number against a very, very difficult Los Angeles Dodgers team. Let's get to it. Mookie Best going to lead things off. Get things cracking. Yo, Niche, salute to you. I appreciate you as always tapping in on the stream. Appreciate the birthday love. Yeah, today's my birthday, y'all. I'm out here streaming, you know what I'm saying? Keeping it simple, staying out the way. It is hotter than Mick Jagger's breath in Atlanta, so I'm just... In the crib chilling today as we start off Mookie Best. We got a 1-1 one -one count. Um, I'm trying to make a connection to my birthday in Mets in the Mets right now. I don't think I ever been to a game That's a ball. around my birthday. I don't really think about it. I never went to a baseball game around the time of my birthday. Maybe maybe one in Atlanta we were playing the Braves. We lost that game. <laughs> Let the record show. Yo, it is definitely hot niche. Like, definitely got to be creeping towards triple digits. Hopefully, David Peterson can make this pitch triple digits. That one fouled off by Betts. We got a full count. Triple digits on the exit velo, 108. But it is foul. The lefty Peterson in a full count against Mookie Betts. Swing and a miss. Betts sat down on strikes. And the Mets getting things going in the right way sitting down one of the best hitters with three strikes right there yo listen i i i have not wanted rain so bad in the summertime bro like let the flowers get some water let my ball head cool off like i i need some change in the temperature jason hayward the next hitter he pops one up the center Tyrone Taylor there to make the play. Now let's get a peek at the rest of the Dodgers lineup. You see Freeman, Otani, Muncy, Teoscar Hernandez. That is a murderous row of hitters. You see a couple different names on the bench. Closing this one out. Will Smith going to get the rest for today. And now Freddie Freeman steps into the box. You feel me? Like I, I love the summertime. Y'all ladies, y'all be dressing amazingly you know what i'm saying and it's a vibe in the summertime you know all, all the all the nighttime functions nightlife is popping you know what i'm saying you can go play ball anywhere pick up pick up the rock get it in but outside of that i'm i'm already ready for winter and fall i'm not even gonna sit here and act you know what i'm saying i live in atlanta where the ladies dress like killers even in the winter so i don't need the summertime for the ladies to act up yeah two one count i know freddie freeman is familiar with that <laughs> former atlanta resident right now he's in a two two count let's see if we can set him down on strikes right here good pitch from peterson peterson has been good for us all year long and that continues here in the first strike three mets do up after setting down the Dodgers one, two, three in the first. All right, this man needs no introduction. Shohei Otani, six and two on the record. See the ERA, 3.76, just a little bit better. David Peterson, see that number right there, 71 Ks. Otani is a monster. Speaking of monsters, Brandon Nemo, nine-game hit streak coming into this game against Shohei. 
he's gonna be the first met to kick things off here that's a fact niche uh nope. the 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 ladies the ladies oh, definitely oh, get it in when it comes to the outfits i will never front on y'all on that shout out to willie hustle in the building you see the stocks rising hustle Yeah, two all count the Nemo. So my 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 goal here is definitely to get ahead on Otani early. We we know he's got look at the pitch repertoire. Slurve. This is number one pitch. Four seam fastball. You see the cutter, you see the splitter, you see the sinker. Shout out to Willie Hustle throwing the purple up in the chat. Shout out to my man Grimace, you heard? This is Grimace gang over here, bro. The Mets. Uh, undefeated since McDonald's own Grimace. I mean, Willie Hustle putting all the purple in the chat. I'm feeling that right now. I'm talking about, bro, the Mets on a run of runs since Grimace threw that pitch right there from where Otani threw that one. That one was in the strike zone. I don't know how that's called for a ball. I'm not complaining, though. Jeff McNeil now steps in as Nemo moves down the first after drawing the work walk <laughs> yo so you gotta chill <laughs> niche niche might have enjoyed that but i would have been like hey yo <laughs> all right eight doubles on the year for mcneil we could use one right here one ball one strike it's a good fastball at the bottom of the zone. Y'all are killing me. All right. Let's see what McNeil can do here. That one's way out of the zone. So, Tani's had some pitches. Missed nowhere near the strike zone. There's another one right there. Count now. Two and two. Shout out to Willie Hustle. I I'll forever give uh, Hustle credit for staying true. To his Brooklyn roots, he might not be a Dodgers fan. Same way I'm not, you know, a Falcons fan or a Ravens fan. But he got, he got love for him. Same way I got love for them. You know what I'm saying? Brooklyn. It, it, apparently, there's a lot of Dodgers fans in Brooklyn still, based upon what we saw at Yankee Stadium a few weeks ago when the Dodgers came to the Bronx. It's the second walk of the game hustle for uh, Otani. So you haven't been good luck for the Japanese ace. Two men on now. Francisco Lindor steps in. That one's way on the outside part of the plate for ball one. Lindor had a little bit of a rough series against San Francisco. Still batting 303 on the season. Even in having a rough series against the Giants, he still hit a home run and had a couple RBIs as Otani misses again upstairs. So we get a look at the total hits for Francisco Lindor over his 10-year career. 1,382 hits for the former Guardian. Mm. That one right down Broadway. I gotta see what my, what my timing was on that one. Saying I'm late on that one. Let's try to go to a contact swing since Otani's throwing gas. Ooh. That one... Uh, Gonna get the man at second. Lindor gonna beat that one out at first. So now we got runners at the corners. Nice play by Freddie Freeman, by the way. He could have stepped on the bag pretty easily right there, but he doesn't have the footwork like that, apparently. All right, so Pete Alonso steps in now. Pete Alonso's been on fire as of late. And I, I want to send Lindor as Alonso takes a first pitch strike. Yeah, that's that's actually a little scary, Hustle. We we definitely coming into a new era of Dodgers fans for real. All right, so I'll, it's a little risky sending Lindor right there. He's gonna be in there safely. So good risk right there, high reward. Lindor picks up his 13 stolen base. Let's take a look at that again on Statcast as you get a look at the numbers. Um, we got a good jump on that one. I'm gonna be honest, I was very close. Easily could have been tagged out if that was Will Smith behind the plate. But Smith has his day off. That's a great throw. But Lindor beats it out. Now we got two runners in scoring position. One ball, two strikes. And Otani throws a ball right there. One, two count to Alonzo. Like I said, I was very interested in watching that Yankees-Dodgers series 
seeing all the Dodgers fans that came out the Yankee Stadium like that. I'm definitely inclined to believe that some of those Dodgers fans stayed around. Right there, Pete Alonso swings and misses. That's some nasty velocity on the inside part of the strike zone. It's a sinker, 96 miles per hour. And there's now two outs here. So now the pressure now moves to Francisco Alvarez. 26 ribs on the season. Now, hold on. You got to break that one down to me, uh... Hustle. I never knew the Mets played in, in Manhattan. I, I call myself knowing all the Mets information. I never knew that. Wow. Where'd they play at? That one's in the dirt. Good job by the catcher blocking that one. Okay, the Polo Grounds. Okay, so see, now I'm going to be honest with you. I didn't know the Polo Grounds was in Manhattan. I never knew that. That's fire. Two seasons. Okay. So a slurve gets by Alvarez. That's usually the type of pitch that he likes to hit. Didn't give Chase that time. Mm. That is a nasty slider. So just as quickly as the Mets were threatening in this inning, Otani sits us down. And we still got a scoreless game heading into the second. So not only is this man dominating on the mound, now he comes to the plate looking to help his own cause, batting 322 on the season. Takes strike one on the lower part of the zone. So that's interesting, bro. I'm going to keep it real. I I don't know why. I, I, that's that's a, that's an interesting fact right there. I never knew Polo Grounds was in Manhattan. And, and then you said right across from the Rucker. That's fire, bro. The shift is on. Lindor makes it throw the first, and there's one gone in the top of the second. All right, here comes Max Muncy. Takes a fastball across the plate for strike one. 294, 10 for 34. In the last 10 games for Muncie. Today facing the lefty Peterson. Who I can honestly say. Yeah, now I think about it. Think about it for a split second. Right after Sandy Alcantara, who just pitched in the last game we streamed. Check out episode 32 on BYC Gaming's YouTube. Um... Alcantara is our best pitcher right now, I probably have to say. Right after him, I think I have to say David Peterson has performed the best this season. Obviously, Senga um, is neck and neck with Peterson. Um, Senga hasn't particularly gotten a run support or as many wins as Peterson has, but it, it's probably... Alcantara number one and then Peterson and Senga 2A and 2B two balls one strike count to That's Hernandez and not a count moves to three balls one strike two outs in the top of the second is a strike and now Peterson has worked the count full you see the fans showing their support in the crowd Let's see if we can get through this at bat. I, I would love to throw a breaking ball right here and try to get a strikeout. But I think it's, it's best if we just go for this out. Teoscar Hernandez is a dangerous hitter. Payoff pitch. Grounded the third. McNeil gloves it. Makes it throw the first. And that'll do it for the Dodgers in the second. Marte, the rookie sensation Mauricio. And the great offseason acquisition, Taylor, going to kick things off for the Amazons. 
So Polo Ground Projects and Epic Fields, uh, ring man. Not <laughs> let's do a DoorDash. It's hilarious. Honestly, I, I've definitely heard that about Ebbets Field. Like it's in the sticks. You know what I'm saying? It ain't it ain't somewhere where you can go and take a whole bunch of pictures and relive Jackie Robinson lore. But um, salute salute to them for putting that plaque in the hood like that, where you could just walk up. You know what I mean? And and stand at home plate where the color barrier was broken. A lot of history when it comes to New York baseball. Speaking of history, this guy right here is trying to make some history. 307, six home runs, 19 RBIs for the Rook, Mauricio. He's ahead 2-0 against Otani right here. I'm going to be honest. That's how we're going to beat Shohei in this game. We're going to have to take pitches, man. Mm, the pitch right there. I mean, honest, uh, we're talking about all this New York history. There hasn't been a player like this since Babe Ruth. Let's talk about New York history. And mm, that one fouled over. Is it going to stay in play? That hurts. So Mauricio chases one on the outside part of the play. Now to be the second out. Now, listen, this is what I was getting ready to say, Hustle, because I agree with you when you say that. When we talk about Babe Ruth, we like, oh, he was the first pitcher slash hitter, or he's one of the best to do it. I think... We credit him as that because he hit, what, six, 700 home runs in his career. Like, that's commendable alone by itself. But when you put up those kind of numbers at the plate and you just happen to pitch at some point in your career, automatically you're the best to do it in that sense. But was 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 Babe, was the, was, was the Babe... Throwing, let me look again. 99 mile power four seamers with 91 splitters and cutters and then 97 sinkers. And then leading the league in home runs all while doing that. <laughs> yeah, so that was definitely a different era of baseball back then. It was it was definitely getting lit, but <laughs> he was Joey Chestnut. He was Joey Chestnut as a baseball player, you know what I'm saying? But even with all that said, as Tyrone Taylor slaps one down the line, it's going to go off the fence. Hayward going to get it back into the infield, but that'll be a stand-up two-out double for Tyrone Taylor, who, if I'm not mistaken, he just extended his hit streak to, I think, 15 games now. We'll see if they show the graphic. That's a good piece of hitting right there from Taylor against Otani. I'm actually curious if he did that. We'll get back to Roof in a second. So they don't show the graphic, but I think Tyrone Taylor now extends his hit streak to 15 games. Is now DJ Stewart steps in. Nine home runs on this young season, even with the injuries for DJ Stewart. But back to Babe Roof. He was great for what he did, right? But at this pace that Otani's going at, I don't know if he'll play as long, a long of a career as Babe Roof did. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Otani might not be in this game much longer if the Mets keep putting doubles up. It's another stand-up double, this time from DJ Stewart, and the Mets take an early 1-0 lead. Sixth double of the year for DJ Stewart. Also tallying his 17th RBI as Tyrone Taylor comes on home rather easily. Now the Mets take the lead. But um, if Otani plays, <laughs> if Otani plays anywhere from a 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 year career, I think he's gonna smash a lot of records that were standing. But see, the thing about playing that long in this era, you know, these arms are breaking down. These guys are getting Tommy John surgery within their first two, three years in the league, so. Will he be able to pitch for that long of a career? We'll talk about that and a record that Hustle just pointed out as Otani gets a strikeout and ends the inning, but not before DJ Stewart puts a run on the board. one nothing Mets headed to the third. Center fielder, Andy 
Tahoe. So, Hustle, you were saying Hank Aaron got the, the home run record, for sure. Uh, I'll be honest, I didn't think anybody was going to break that. And when I met Hank Aaron, RIP to the legend, I told him, I don't care how many people, you know what I'm saying, uh, hit 700 plus home runs, you will forever be the home run king. He smiled, we took a picture, RIP to the late, great Hammer and Hank, but Hank Aaron, like, I, I'm going to get to my bigger point in a second, but Hank Aaron, you you got to salute him because it's not like he was just hitting home runs and then go looking at the highlights on TikTok that night. Like, he was playing in an era where they didn't want black people on the field. Like, forget black people. They didn't want any people of color in the league. So, you know, you you're doing stuff like that and breaking records, like, super, super props. To him, him and Hank, one of the greatest baseball players in the history of the sport. Now, I was going to make a point about you talking about that record. So, Hustle, can you look this up for me? I'm being a little lazy. I don't feel like doing it right now. Does Hank Aaron still hold the home run record now that Negro League statistics are added to Major League statistics? Um... I want to say Josh Gibson now has the record, but I'm going to be 100. I don't know off the top of the head. Good hustle from David Peterson getting down the line and beating the speedy Sweeney to first base. And it's now two outs. Diego Cartaya stepping up to the plate. So it's Memorial Day in this episode of... Uh, BYC Gamers New York Bench Franchise Episode 33 You know what I'm saying um, Matter of fact it's two holidays You know what I'm saying Memorial Day In the game And it's Biz Biller holiday In real life How you like that O2 count now As Peterson looks to shut down The Dodgers again For another inning O2 count Try to get him with an all-speed pitch change up on the way. This is low. 34 pitches thus far for Peterson. Ooh, that one slapped. But it's going to go into the upper deck above the mezzanine. One-two count. Haven't thrown a curveball much in this, in this game. The 12-6. Nearly gets by Cartaya, but he fouls that one off. Go back to the change up. Mm, got him. Outside part of the plate and low. Let's bookmark that and remember that they having a little trouble with that change up on the outside part of the plate. Middle of the third on the way. Mets do up. Leading up for the Mets. The third baseman, Jeff McNeil. Jeff McNeil steps into the box. Walked in his first A-B. He's got 16 of those on the season. First pitch from Otani on the wow. way. Way inside. Backs McNeil off the plate. 2022 was a year for Jeff McNeil. I was... I, I've always been a Jeff McNeil fan. I'm not going to lie. But that 2022 season, man. Winning that batting title... Coming up with so many clutch hits that season. See if he could come up with one here. He's in a one-two count. Good pitch from Otani, 97 miles per hour. And it's a strike. Mm. Tough slurve right there. Falls out of the zone. Count even at two. Shout out to my, all my people that watch on YouTube. I just got a question for y'all. Have y'all ever gotten a pitch clock violation i'm just curious about that because i got my first pitch clock violation in the game i was playing early i just sat there i don't, I don't even know what i was doing i don't know if i was looking at instagram i mean looking at a fine WNBA player or something but i got my first pitch clock violation as that one's popped up to teoscar hernandez in left and there's one out 
Frankie Lindor stepping up now. He grounded out in his first A.B., but was able to beat out the throw to first. That then led to a stolen base, and he scored. Well, actually, did he score? No. That was McNeil that scored. I stand corrected. That's a ball. No, wait. I can't remember. I'm drawing blanks right here. Either way, count is one and one. Ooh, that slurve is nasty. When he puts that pitch in that location, it's, it's not much I can do with that. Really good deception on that breaking pitch. The fastball misses inside. Two balls, two strikes. Ah. Like, when I recognized it out of the hand as a fastball, by the time I got ready to, to swing at it, it was already right there and by me. By the time I thought about swinging, it was right there where it slowed down at. Lindor sat down on strikes. Lindor hasn't, hasn't had much trouble with strikeouts in the early half of the season, but in May, his K rate has definitely gone up. Speaking of Ks, Pete Alonso now up. He's among the league leaders in strikeouts. He struck out in the first. But that does not take away from those 20 home runs best in the majors. I think the only person that's close to him is Lindor and I want to say Mike Trout. Hey. Otani's starting to get comfortable here. Blazes a 96 mile power fastball by Alonzo. Mm. Oh my goodness. Recognize the slurve. It was way up in the zone. That's where Pete likes to drive those pitches. Late swing results and a foul. One ball, two strikes. That's ball two. So as y'all can see, we're doing a good job being patient against Otani. Just got to do a better job of converting on some of these opportunities. Now we got a 3-2 count to the Mets All-Star first baseman, former rookie of the year. Payoff pitch, and it is a 37th walk against Pete Alonso. Third walk on the game for Otani. I told y'all, man, I'm trying to lead the league in walks, whether that's as a team or having an individual lead in that category. Mr. Matt trying to wake the fans up. I don't know where Grimace is at. Hustle, throw some purple in the, in the chat, man. Let, let's let's churn up real quick. Two outs, one man on first. Otani starts Alvarez off with a 97 mile power, excuse me, 92 mile power sinker at the oh, knees. Man. So that slurve doesn't look nearly as vicious against righties. It's a little tougher against lefties when that pitch uh, makes its way to the inside part of the zone. A little easier to recognize from Alvarez's side of the plate. One, two is your count. Mm. You Might have went on that one. Saying I held up. We need that. I'm gonna step out the box. Try to gather myself here as we try to keep this inning alive. 22 pitches for Otani. 11 strikes, 11 balls. Make that 12. 3 2 count. I'm going to send Alonzo on this one. The pitch from Otani is another slur. As I said, so it's a little easier to recognize from the right hand side of the plate facing the right hander. And there's another wall. Now Marte going to step into the box. Two men on. Alonzo at second. Alvarez on first. See what Marte can do here against Otani. That splitter is a pitch we haven't seen much in this game so far. I didn't even recognize it coming out of his hands. One strike. is a slurve on the outside part of the plate so this is a tip out there for anybody that runs MLB to show whether you use PCI whether you use the buttons it doesn't matter it, it honestly doesn't one of the most important things you could do as a hitter is try to recognize that pitch before it gets to home plate you know what I'm saying like try to recognize it out of the hand try to recognize the movement and where it may end up. 
Right now, Otani having trouble getting through these batters. He's got to be over 30 pitches in this inning right now. 3-1 count to Marte. Mauricio's on deck. Mm. Timing off on that slurve. Foul back into the bleachers. We'll send the runners on this 3-2 pitch. The runners go. Splitter. Touches the inside part of the plate, but it's fouled off. We'll do 3-2 all over again. Otani to Marte. Oh, my. I'm going to tell you how right now. For the rest of today, I will never forgive myself for swinging at that pitch. Fourth inning on the way. All right, so there's there's always a point in a baseball game where something can change how things have been going. We've been moving pretty smoothly through three as Mookie Betts leads off, struck out in his first at-bat. But there's always a point in the game where the momentum can change. Right there, the Mets really could have taken full control of this game and a perfect game. I, I literally spoke that one into existence. The momentum literally changes in one swing. Mookie Betts breaks up the perfect game there for David Peterson. I tried not to mention it. I was definitely aware of it. But uh, I've never thrown a no-hitter in MLB The Show. It's just too hard, bro. I don't play on the easier difficulties. You know what I'm saying? It's straight legend or Hall of Fame for me. And it's like, bro, I don't know how people do it. So Betts going to get thrown out a second, but hey, we're going to make it in the first safely. Lindor took a little contact on that slide. Let's see if he's okay. Good throw. Ooh, hits the ground hard. Looks like he's still in the game. Freddie Freeman now steps in. He swings at the first pitch that he sees. Pops it to center. Tyrone Taylor had to go a long way to reel that one in, but that'll be the second out of the inning. But, yeah, man, I, I don't know how people do it, man. I, I think I could throw a no-hitter if I play, like, in a league where it's, like, all a bunch of users with some being good, some being not so good, some being trash, some being excellent. I think I could get maybe a no-hitter in one of those. And y'all stay tuned for the Keep It Pro League. We will be doing that on Madden, NCAA, 2K when that drops later this year. But we're going to start it off on MLB The Show probably in july i don't want to wait all the way until august we'll try to get it cracking in july if you're interested if you're good at mlb the show you want to play competitively and play for cash we will be playing in a cash prize league it's going to be cash entry each team is going to have their own dollar value i think the dodgers are the highest value team of any of them Either way, it's a 2-2 two -two count to Shohei Otani. Ooh, curveball just misses. As Max Muncy is on deck, we got a 3-2 count. Jason Hayward takes the lead off first. Let's see if Peterson can keep this stellar start going. Oh, my. Otani takes that one for a long ride, but it's going to go foul. All right, so we don't want to make that mistake again. Hang in the sinker let's try to get the sinker on the inside part of the plate that doesn't work Otani draws the first walk of the day Muncie now stepping in with an opportunity with Jason Hayward on second speedy Otani at first and he's dealing with a 1-0 count out the gate the pitch there from Peterson This one popped in the right field. Marte is going to get under it, and the Mets make it through another inning, shutting down this Dodgers offense. Let's see if the Mets can add to what's already been a solid game for them. Mauricio, Taylor, and Stewart do up. Leading up for the Mets, the second baseman, Robbie 
So as we always say at this time, this is not John Boog Shambi. This is not Chris Singleton. It's your boy B-I-Z in the place to be. Celebrating Gemini season in a major way. Bottom of the fourth. Ronnie Mauricio getting things started in this night game against Otani and the Dodgers. Mauricio puts a good swing on that baseball, but it's popped the left. Teoscar Hernandez almost doesn't have to move, and that's the first out. All right, so how about this? This is my birthday, right? So let's do this. I'm going to place three birthday wishes for what I'd like to see from the Mets this season. I'm not going to get too crazy. Y'all know what I'm going to say, obviously. So let me just do this season for the Mets, right? Mm. Nancy slurve right there to Taylor. 1-1 one, one count. Um, first thing, I hope the Mets stay healthy, man. If the Mets can stay healthy, I think we do have a chance to make the playoffs. I mean, look at how we're playing right now, and we don't have our best starter in Senga. Uh, some guys are just starting to come around as far as hitting the baseball. Mm. It's that slurve again, fouled off by Taylor. So if the Mets can stay healthy, I think this season will definitely get better. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to... Uh, Edwin Diaz. I think I think I'll use him as my, my second example or second wish. If Edwin Diaz can get that confidence back, I love that feeling. I love the feeling of a perfect swing as Taylor gets a base hit. But I love that feeling of getting the game to the ninth inning and knowing when you hand that ball over to somebody like Edwin Diaz, you can pretty much close the door on anybody no matter who the opponent is. So I'm hoping that Edwin Diaz gets his confidence back and returns to form as the best closer in baseball. You know what I'm saying? And the last one, I'll keep it simple, man. I ain't going to get too crazy on my G-Day, man. I, I just hope the Mets have a chance to make the playoffs, man. Wild card and at least crown would be beautiful, but I know we're competing with a very tough division, including the Braves and the Phillies. But right now, oh, my. Oh, that one dropped in. I thought he was going to catch it. Oh, my goodness. I was already on a clean run to the plate, bro. I would have been easily safe. Either way, DJ Stewart puts a great swing on his baseball. I wish I could see Taylor running in this situation because it looked like the center fielder was going to get there. He takes the dive. It hits the wall. Stewart with, I think it's the second, it's the second double of the game. So now, just to correct myself from earlier, it was Taylor that scored on that earlier run. Now he has a chance to score another run as Nimmo steps into the box. He's gonna ground this one to second. Mookie Betts not gonna go to the plate with that ball. So even though it's the second out. Brandon Nimmo going to drive a run home on the ground out. His teammates congratulated him on that one. McNeil now steps in. Two outs. David Stewart's on third. See if he can get a good at bat out of McNeil right here as he starts off looking at a ball. I'm going to be honest with you. I did not know Walker Bueller was now in the Dodgers bullpen. That is crazy, bro. Truth be told, this is going to be a tough series against the Dodgers. So it's very important that we get out to an early lead here. It's now Otani up to 86 pitches in this game. We're only through three and two-thirds innings. Mm. That slurve is definitely one of Otani's best pitches. 2-1 count to McNeil. Mm. A little gun shy from the slurve. We stare at a fastball right there. Even count at two. Mm. There's that slurve again. Just can't seem to time it right. Put another one into the seats. Mm. 
is a cutter that comes into the inside part of the plate. McNeil able to foul it. That's stuff about the box, man, because Otani is throwing some good stuff right now. Tough pitch to lay off. That fastball misses the strike zone. It's now 3-2. Stewart's still on third. There's still two outs. We got a payoff pitch on the way. Mm. Great at bat here by McNeil. Puts the splitter into the seats. Ninth pitch of the at bat is on the way. Oh my goodness. I'm going to keep it a band with you, bro. I was way off on the timing on that one. I recognize that pitch, but just not able to do anything with it. Freddie Freeman there to make the catch as we head to the fifth inning from beautiful City Field in Flushing, New York. In steps Teoscar Hernandez. He fouls one down the line, just barely foul. As David Peterson moves into the fifth inning of work. 0-2 count against Hernandez. 53 pitches to this point for Peterson. He is cruising. Curveball misses in the dirt. Yo, Hustle, if you still in here, man, um, who's your favorite Dodger of all time? I think I got to go with Mike Piazza. I don't even think it's close. The Dodgers could use Mike Piazza right now as Teoscar Hernandez set down on strikes. Peterson starts off the next hitter with a sinker. Thankfully, that one bounces off the tarp, and that's probably going to prevent him from getting to second with an easy double right there. Base hit for Andy. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. I can easily say pages, and then I, I would quickly be corrected by the comment section on YouTube. They would let me know. It's probably like something with a little adobo on it. Oh, my goodness. Now, this one slapped into the gap. It's going to bounce off the wall. And that's going to easily score the run there. Uh, Sweeney now in the second. He puts himself in the scoring position with an RBI double. That's his third double on the season. And uh, all of a sudden, the go-ahead run is now at the plate. This is why you can never get too hyped in baseball. The game is not over until it's over. Now, Peterson having a little bit of trouble getting the ball across the strike zone. You see Francisco Alvarez trying to calm down his starter. Now the count going to move to 3-2. Peterson attacking with the sinker. Ooh. Throws one right by him. That'll be strike three, fifth K of the game for Peterson. Two outs now as Mookie Bet steps into the box. The speedy Sweeney is on second. Peterson misses right there with the changeup. When I heard the sound of that bat, I got nervous. Well, it looks like Brandon Nimmo is going to be there to reel that one in. But the Mets find themselves now with a one-run lead after Trey Sweeney puts one into the gap and sends the, the Dodgers up. Excuse me, puts the Dodgers closer to tie in this game. Now, 
Los Angeles, number 21, Walker Bueller. So just as soon as we got down that the Dodgers scored a run in that pass inning, now we can look on the bright side as Walker Bueller comes into the game. Shohei going to take a seat as far as pitching. We'll still see him as a hitter in this game. Bueller going to start things off against Francisco Lindor, who takes a strike upstairs. Lindor with a very impressive 378 on base percentage. Finds himself ahead in this count after the fastball misses. Oh, I'm going to keep it a band with you, bro. That's a pitch. Probably should have taken. Sometimes Lindor is good at driving pitches like that the opposite way. 2-2 two -two now. Mm. There's a pitch in a, sim a similar location. And the center fielder was playing Lindor a little deep there. That's going to play into the hands of the all-star shortstop as he slaps one in the center. That'll drop in for a lead-off single. So the Mets get things going here in the fifth with a very clutch hit from Lindor. And now we can use another one from Peter Alonso who gets started off with a strike. Right across the plate, 95 mile power, four seam. Let's get a look at the pitch repertoire for Walker, Walker Bueller. Four seam fastball to toss out at 97. He's got a very high velocity cutter, slider, knuckle curve, and a changeup that hits pretty high on the gun. Nothing going right there as we get a pitch out. Lindor with 13 stolen bases on the season, stole one earlier in this game. I got to see how Bueller approaches the A-B before I just decide I'm going to run with it. Wow. Very questionable call right there. That one got a lot of the plate. But call for the second ball in this A-B. 2-1 count. Oh, my goodness. There have been some fastballs up in the zone that we have missed. There's another one with Pete Alonzo. Count even at two. Bueller goes with the knuckle curve right there. It will miss. 3-2 count. Lindor's going to be in motion. There he goes. And another freaking strikeout in the dirt. So despite how well the Mets have played, we have really, really left some runs on the board, man. Pete, you got to take that pitch. If he takes that pitch, he's walking the first. And Lindor is not even getting a throw down the second. Just like that, strike him out, throw him out. And then Alvarez comes up to the plate. Next pitch, lines one to the first baseman, Freddie Freeman. We'll see Freeman in this inning along with Hayward and Otani. We're headed to the sixth. Leading off for the Dodgers, the right fielder, Jason Hayward. So I really don't feel the need to get Luke Casey necessarily warmed up yet. But just in case, y'all yeah, see the energy getting a little low for Peterson. 68 pitch on the way. It's the first one to Jason Hayward. And it's a strike. Hayward, a very consistent player no matter where he's played. Whether Atlanta, L.A., St. Louis, Chicago. Right now he's down 0-2. He's 0 for 2 on the day against Peterson. Let's see if the Mets lefty can get yet another K here. 0-2 count. Oh, thought that one was going to stay in the zone. The bottom drops out of it. One ball, two strikes. Hey, we're going to pop this one in shallow center. Tyrone Taylor there to make the catch. One out. So in the previous game, we warmed up Edwin Diaz to uh, get ready against the Giants, but the Mets ended up adding a gang of runs in the eighth inning. I'm never against that, but this is the Dodgers. They got a good bullpen. 
they got a lineup that's never out of the game no matter what the lead is so let's hope if this is a close ball game that we can see Mr. Trumpet himself Edwin Diaz one two count to Freddie Freeman Freddie gonna ground this one to short Lindor who has been pretty much platinum glove potential this season makes it throw the first and there's two outs all right so instead of Shohei Otani we walked him in his previous at bat this one gonna be hit the opposite way the shift was on so Lindor not in his usual area to field that one and Otani has a two out single So Max Muncy, another lefty. This is the fourth left-hander we'll face in this inning. Main reason I didn't want to bring Peterson out, but now as Muncy puts this one into the outfield, Otani's going to advance to third. Oh, this is a tough decision right here. So Teoscar Hernandez is the hitter. Y'all see who's on deck. This is, this is a tough decision, man. All right, that's what we're going to do. This is very, very risky. Let's walk Hernandez. We'll load the bases. Now back, the center fielder, Andy Carho. Now, now... This is this is where things get tough. Let's let's think about this for a second. Let's do a quick mound visit. The the problem with this situation is it's very tough to bring in a pitcher from the bullpen to face a hitter in a situation like this. You got two outs, obviously. We only need to get one out, but the bases are loaded. We got a right hander at the plate, and we got two lefties in the pen. We already got a lefty on the mound. We know that uh, his confidence has been good, uh, Peterson, all day. Honestly, I've, I've seen this movie too many times in the 50-plus games I've played this season. Let's go ahead and pull Peterson. I, I don't want to do this. I want him to, and you can see he's disappointed. You want him to be able to get the last out, you know, like, like in, in case of a situation where we give up a run right here, you don't want the run responsible to be given up by a man in the bullpen that man's gonna be Brooks Rayleigh I got confidence in him he's been solid this season he's got seven holds this is another key key situation you see that batting average against right-handed batters is 306 I'm gonna just throw some pitches to get uh to get that sinker nice and confident before this hitter steps into the batter's box so this is the biggest at-bat of the game for either team. Mets have had plenty of opportunities to score. Dodgers have had plenty of opportunities to score. They were no hit through three. And now no bigger chance to put runs on the board than here in the top half of the six. Two outs. Bases loaded. Brooks Rayleigh, a pitcher. One pitch is line to Pete Alonzo. Pete wins the foot race to first base. One pitch is all we needed. You love to see it. The Mets get out of a major jam. Marte, Mauricio, and Taylor look to add to the one-run lead. Starlet Marte now steps in. This has been a closely contested ball game. If you're just jumping in, this is BYC Gaming. Bring your controller. I'll go by the name of Biz. You got 2 0 count. Nice cutter right there. That one started inside, made its way across the plate. I got to look at his pitch type again, real quick. Fastball right 
two two count to Marte. Marte is the guy on the team I call the best two strike hitter in baseball. At least when it comes to the show. He's in that situation right now. Full count. I tried to smash that one, but rolled over it. Grounded the second. And there's one out. Ooh. Change up, swung on and miss. 0 2 count. Mm, really? I guess, it, I guess it did catch a lot of the zone right there. Three pitch K for Bueller. Let's look at it again. I'll be honest, even if that was a ball, look, I kind of went on the swing. So, no sense in arguing about it. Two outs. Just that fast, and now Tyrone Taylor stepping in. I'm gonna try to do it right now. You know, I do my top five sometimes in these episodes. Um, I'm gonna do top five Mets. Hmm, let me think about this for a second. How can I, how can I word this? Let me say top five Mets offseason acquisitions. I gotta think about that, and I got uh, another half inning to think about it as. Taylor pops up to Hernandez, and the Dodgers are going to come back up here in the seventh. They're going to send up Sweeney, Kataya, as well as Mookie Betts. Leading off for the Dodgers, the shortstop, Trey Sweeney. I don't think I can do a top five, y'all, off the top of the head. I'm just trying to think, like, who was traded versus who was acquired in the offseason. Versus who got traded mid-season. The main names I'm thinking about are guys like hmm, Gary Carter. Mike Piazza has to be one of those, but he got traded mid-season. Um, Carlos Delgado. One of my favorite batting stances in MLB history. Uh, man, Cliff Floyd. John Olerud. Like I feel like I'm gonna be forgetting somebody, so I'm gonna just leave it with those with those mess legends. As Diego fouls off the slurve, 0-2 count. As Brooks Rayleigh back out here for action after getting a big one pitch out in the six with the bases juice, has a chance to get the second out rather quickly. Here is the pitch. Caught her nowhere near the zone right there. One, two count. Three. Swing and a miss. First K of the game for Rayleigh. Mookie no. Best now to hit her. Starts off with a 2 0 count. Ball three. Make it 3 0. Don't want to load these bases up because you got guys like Freeman and Otani following Hayward and Betts. That's a four pitch walk right there. Not a fan of that approach right there. All right, so Edwin Diaz, I'll start warming him up in the next inning. Right now, let's get. Jorge Lopez and Phil Bickford going. All right, so still two outs here against the Dodgers, but now Jason Hayward steps in, man on first. Five straight balls now for Rayleigh, but he makes it all up with one nice play. Rayleigh gloves that one, and the Mets make it out of the seventh. The top half, at least. It's time to stretch. Stewart, Nemo, and McNeil do up for the Mets. All right, so just real quick, I'm sorry. Y'all know I'm a sucker for the nice highlights. This is such a big play because if that ball gets by Rayleigh right here, 
this inning gets a whole lot longer, yo. Like, real talk. This inning could have been a lot longer. I'm trying to get a nice little screenshot out of that. I love it. Good job by Rally. Keeping the Dodgers off the bases. Let's move to the bottom half of this inning. DJ Stewart. Take strike one. Walker Bueller now working his way into the seventh. 25th pitch should be on the way. 0-1 count. Four seamer misses low. DJ Stewart definitely going to play an important role in this lineup. We need some power as well as somebody that can drive in runs at the bottom of the lineup. And so far, Stewart has done a very good job of that this season. Two for two on the day, currently in a 3-1 count. Mm, oh, my goodness. The reaction on that one was very late. Stewart easily could have taken that one for a ride. Payoff pitch fouled off. Now, we've been in a couple of 3-2 counts today, and we've really swung at some poor pitches out of the zone. Granted, most of those have been with runners on base. Nobody on base this time. DJ Stewart very patient at the plate and forces Walker Bueller to throw his first walk of the day. Speaking of walks, Brandon Nimmo steps in. He's 0 for 2. His only time on base today was a walk. Also has an RBI on the ground out. Mm. Time in off again right there. Brandon Nimmo currently on a nine-game hit streak, so this may be his last at-bat to potentially add to that hit streak. Mm. Good swing. Good location on that pitch, but going to pop it right to center. That'll be the first out. So I'm sitting here for a second trying to think, is there anybody on the bench that could potentially pinch hit right here in this inning? We do have Brad Beatty, who, despite his struggles, has been a consistent run producer from that number nine spot. McNeil, though, up to the dish. He's 0 for 2 on the game. He drew a walk in his first at bat. He's got DJ Stewart on first with one out. Oh my goodness. Again, caught swinging at some high cheese. Again, I, I, I thought I timed that one out pretty well. Instead, it's popped to the mound. Freddie Freeman makes the catch. And Bueller has two gone here. But don't fear Mets fans. Francisco Lindor now stepping into the box. Two outs in this situation. We still got a man on first. Lindor been physical all day. Stealing bases, getting taken out at second base. By the likes of Mookie Betts. Another one we just cannot time. This time it's popped the shallow left. The shortstop going to be there to make a routine catch. And the Mets strand another runner on base. Two runs, five hits for the Mets. One run, five hits for the Dodgers. Will it stay that way? We're headed to the eighth. Leading off for the Dodgers. The first baseman, Freddie Green. Very interesting point in this game right here. Is now I'm gonna have to just go check out what's going on in the bullpen. So we are down to one more lefty in the pen. We got Jorge Lopez pretty much ready to go if needed in this eighth. And now we got Edwin Diaz warming up in the pen. So we got Freeman at bat now, Otani on deck, and and then Muncie right after that. And if it does make it to a fourth hitter this inning, that man would be Teoscar Hernandez. So 
We got an 0-2 count against Freeman. Let's see how long we can leave Rayleigh in this game as we face three straight lefties in this eighth. The lefty Rayleigh has an 0-2 count against Freeman. Freeman's having a fun time just fouling off pitches right now. The slurve has been the pitch that's giving me trouble all day. Let's see, can we get Freeman with it? Instead, we won't. Freeman says, I've seen this pitch plenty of times in BP. He starts off the Dodgers with a leadoff single. I ain't even gonna lie. This is gonna be the toughest inning. Probably even tougher than having the bases loaded with two outs in the six. Shohei Otani, who's one for two on the day, make it two for three. He puts one that's gonna go all the way to the fence. I wish we had a chance to throw out Freddie Freeman. Oh, wait a minute, maybe we do. He's going home. Freddie Freeman, I don't know what the third base umpire, I mean, third base coach was thinking. Otani roped that one down the line. That one got to the fence pretty quickly. I guess he's not familiar with Brandon Nimmo's work. It bounces off the wall. That is a great throw right there for Francisco Alvarez. I mean, excuse me, that's a great throw by, I think it was Francisco Lindor that had the cutoff. That is a big play right there. And now another big scoring opportunity for the Dodgers here. They got speed on second. And Shohei Otani. Now it's an 0-2 count. I'm going to just waste the pitch right here. Oh, he swung at it. I will take that. Muncy fooled by the cutter. I was just going to waste the pitch and then throw over the second to check on Otani. Now we got two outs. All right, so let's go ahead and do what we mentioned earlier. Let's put Jorge Lopez in the game. I probably should, should put Edwin Diaz in the game, but Jorge has a sinker. I could use a sinker ball pitcher right now. If we can get a ground ball to short, second, third, first, whatever may have you, we can just force the grounder the same way we did with Brooks Raley in the six with two outs. We will be in a good position to hand this game over to Edwin Diaz in the ninth. I'm going to use all my warm-up pitches here. Lopez hitting his own very well right now. No ditty. We got two pitches left, and then we will be facing... Uh, I don't even remember who's coming up to the dish, but we'll see. Is it Teoscar? I think it is. All right. <clears throat> Lopez is ready to go. He's throwing that sinker well. We'll start Hernandez off with a fastball. That one's going to miss. 98 on the gun. Lopez coming out throwing heat. There's a sinker in there for a strike. That sinker misses upstairs. I'm very glad that it missed outside of the zone. Want to check on Otani, but our middle infielders are in position to feel what could potentially be a ground out right here. Otani takes the lead off the second. Mets looking to get out of this eighth. The pitch from Lopez. Ooh. In the dirt, full count now. Lopez with the full count. Walks Hernandez, that isn't the worst thing to happen right there. We got a base open. As long as we can get through Podges. I, don't, I think I heard the PA announcer call him Podges. His mama named him Andy. I'm going to name him Andy. I'm going to call him Andy. Man. This is... A tough matchup every time we play the Dodgers, man. The Dodgers always put up a good game. They swept us in our previous match. And now the Mets looking to return the favor as we got a 1-2 count against Andy. 
<laughs> the pitch from Lopez. Oh, my God. And ladies and gentlemen, I throw a change up that, oh, my God, man. I throw a change up that oh, just stays in the zone. And Jorge Lopez never ceases to amaze me. I mean, for his, as good as he's pitched for us this season, he just always finds a way to give up a hit that we just can't afford, bro. And now with, with the Dodgers adding another hit there, now he, now he strikes this guy out on three pitches. You just can't make this stuff up, bro. This guy I never even heard of. I can't pronounce his last name. I'm pretty sure he's a talented major leaguer. But either way, I'm salty. The Dodgers have now taken a 3-2 lead in the eighth. I'm going to keep it a band with you. I'm sick, bro. We got a good part of the lineup coming up, but it's freaking Jorge Lopez, man. I'll tell you this. Jorge Lopez will not be coming out the pitch in the eighth. If we have a tie game or a lead, it'll be uh, Diaz. If we're losing, it'll be Phil Bickford. I, I don't mind losing. You know, it's baseball. It's 162 games. It's a marathon of a season. It's just games like this, bro, where you got a perfect game, no hits, do three against a, a lineup like this. And then the, the bullpen just outstanding all throughout. I should have just brought in Edwin Diaz to get that one out. That's my mistake. There's a mistake by the ump on that pitch. 2-1 count to Pete Alonso. Let's focus on this bottom half of the end and see can the Mets tie this ball game up. Pete Alonso very quickly finds himself in a 3-1 count. Here it is. And I took a power swing on that one. A perfect power swing. I was not about to play these games with the Dodgers. So the Dodgers take the lead on a two-run shot into the gap but Pete Alonzo says uh-uh we ain't doing no gap work right here solo shot for Pete Alonzo and the Mets tie this game up crowd going crazy in Queens I'm gonna let you know right now I refuse to lose to these Dodgers man Pete Alonzo sends a bullet that was a line drive shot it's also a no doubter as there you see the Dodgers blow the lead. I love it, bro. This has been a classic right here. Ooh, cutter upstairs. Alvarez tries to put one in the bleachers himself, but it's swung on and missed. 0 for 2 day for Alvarez. Now down 0-2 in the count. Has drawn a walk today. Looking to keep this at-bat alive. Ooh. I don't think I swung on that one, but even though the umpire has been calling that inside part of the plate a, uh, a ball, that one was pretty much clearly a strike. Alvarez sat down on the 98-mile-per-hour sinker. Three oh count to Marte. And he'll take a strike on the outside part of the plate. Oh ho, ho, ho. another one right down Broadway. I was late on that one. I was hundred miles per hour, so I can't really get too upset about not being able to put that one in play. Oh my goodness. Nasty slider. 
That one just barely got out of the zone. This guy's got cheese, and we got to be aware of that. Not going to matter in this at-bat for Marte. Draws a walk. They're asking me, do I want a pinch runner? Let's see who we got. Do have Harrison Bader? I, I gotta take I gotta take them up on that one. Good call by the coach right there. I forgot Bader didn't start today. Harrison Bader now on first. Y'all gotta know I'm looking to potentially steal right here. Y'all gotta know that. The pitcher knows that. Comes with the short stride and throws a slider for a strike. I mean, nothing but short, stri short strides from the relief pitcher. Now I'm expecting him to go back to his regular motion. We're not going to run quite yet. I want fouled off. This guy doesn't have much all-speed stuff in his repertoire. You see that? That slider is right there, but even that slider has some motion on it. Okay, so that one upstairs and in. Bader, the runner at first. There he goes. I'm struck out looking, and we get struck out. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, we've been aggressive on the base pass, and it just, it just has not worked in our favor today. But I won't complain too much. Pete Alonso has tied this game. It's three apiece heading to the ninth. All right, so we haven't seen this man all day. Will Smith now coming into the game. I'm going to be honest. I was going to bring in Bigford, but let's go ahead. Bring in Mr. Trumpet himself. Y'all know how I do it this time. I ain't going to say no more. Y'all know the man, Edwin Diaz, coming out the bullpen. Taking his walk towards the mound. He has blown one save this season. I ain't worried about that, though. He's got 13 saves and 14 opportunities. I'm not even going to warm him up. Let's just go throw some straight gas. 99 miles per hour in his pass. Will Smith, the all-star catcher for Los Angeles. 98 miles per hour right there. Back Smith off the plate. That one reaches triple digits. 101 on the gun to be exact. The slider throwing to Smith that time out of the zone, but it's fouled off. Doesn't give chase to the slider that time. Diaz looking to shut the door on this Dodger. And Will Smith comes up in a pinch hit opportunity. Set down on strikes. 101. And there's nothing Smith can do with that pitch. Ugh, look at that swing. Nasty work. Up now comes Mookie Betts. Edwin Diaz fully rested. Has not pitched in quite some time. Betts stepping in one for three. With a single in this game. He walked in his previous at-bat. That at bat is the one that started all the trouble for the Mets in the last inning. I was gonna go with the velocity. Let's hit him with the slider. Bets, I don't I don't know what you're arguing about, brother. That was clearly a strike. Come on, bro. Like what what let me, let me make sure I'm not tripping. Let's let's try to see it from up cam. <laughs> Not on cam, but up cam. <laughs> I 
I mean, it's clearly across the plate. I guess it's the location that he's upset with. That's right across the plate, bro. That's a hittable pitch. I don't know what Mookie is uh, throwing that fit for, but that's clearly, like, that's a hittable pitch right there. And you're looking at it for strike three, bets. I love it right there. I wish it didn't glitch. I'm trying to get the the shot of him throwing down the bat while Alvarez is like, whoops. <laughs> that is a great screenshot, whether I use that or not. I love it. All right, so we're not out of the inning yet. Let's not let's not get too hyped. Jason Hayward now stepping in. 0 for 4 on the day. He takes a fastball inside for ball one. So Betts and Will Smith, two of the best hitters on this team, set down on strikes. And now polar opposite here as Hayward is ahead in the count. 3-0. Diaz gets back right with a fastball. I'm going to be honest, yo. I, I kind of predicted that in my head. I'm going to be honest with y'all. Something told me, yo, if you got to walk him, it's not that big of a deal. But don't throw a fastball somewhere where he can make you pay. And literally, as I said that in my head, that's exactly what happened. We leave a fastball hanging right across the plate. That's my mistake. I, I was I was in, in a position to, to win that at bat. And instead... Jason Hayward sends one a long ways out. Mets bench in disbelief. Dodgers bench celebrating as they now regain the lead. This has been a, a game that's going to give me an aneurysm, bro. Look at this home run. Oh, my goodness. Like, he almost hit that to the show sign. In, in, in real life, City Field, that's the Coca-Cola sign. Like, that one is going up there by the hot dog stand. Like, he just knocked over five glizzies with that home run. I can't even act like I'm not sick right now, bro. Jorge Lopez, who's been very good for us, blows the lead. Now, Edwin Diaz, who's sharp more than not, just, just gives up a blast. Like... We still got a chance to win this game in the ninth, but we are down 4-3. This is this has just been a rough day. Freddie Freeman gonna pop this one to third. McNeil's gonna get under it. And we are now headed to the ninth. Jason Hayward makes this a brand new ball game. Dodgers with a one run lead. As we got three outs left for the Mets to make this a game. All right, so the closer, Evan Phillips, is now going to come into the game. He has 15 saves and 16 opportunities. Remember I said Diaz only has one blown save? Phillips has one blown save. Let's see, can the Mets find a, another source of a miracle right here and potentially make this a tough inning for Evan Phillips. As you see, he's in the top five. When it comes to saves in the National League, very disappointed to not see Edwin Diaz there. He's right there in the mix, but we got to do a better job of uh, closing these games out. This is a game we should have won. Man. Either way, 1-1 one, one count. This game is not over. I definitely would have enjoyed it a lot better if Diaz was closing the door in the ninth. But the Mets are resilient. The Mets have won games where we've been down a lot more than just one run. But the umpire going to help <laughs> Phillips cause right there, blessing him with the strike on the sweeping curve. Count even at two. Nice sinker there for Phillips. Taylor able to foul it off. Sweeping curve, which drops down to 82. Tops out at 86. Cutter at 95. 
four seam fastball and a sinker are the pitches for Phillips. I got to start setting myself up for failure as we barely foul off that curve right there. Count still 2 2. Mets fans on their feet if you look into the outfield bleachers. Oh my God. First of all, I didn't want to lay off of it. I'm glad I laid off of it. Phillips is not happy about that call, and I cannot blame him in the slightest. Full count to Tyrone Taylor. Biggest 3 2 count of the game. And these Dodgers have been loving that sweeping curve. Taylor able to foul it off again. This is the ninth pitch of the at bat. I got good swing time on it, but apparently the show does not give credit for that. Popped up to the first base side. Freddie Freeman retires the first out. We, we, we put some good swings on the baseball today. We just had some bad luck with the results of these uh, good swings. In steps, DJ Stewart, a man that can change the game with one swing of the bat every time that he steps up to the plate. Two home runs and two RBIs in his last two games. Today he is two for two, two doubles and two walks. Very productive day. Excuse me, two for two for two with one walk. Stand corrected. Good swing right here from Stewart. The center fielder giving chase. Is that a home run? Yo, I thought it bounced off the fence, but it is a home run. DJ Stewart, who has been clutch for this Mets ball club all year, hits his most, well, maybe not his most clutch, because he did hit a walk-off, but now nah, I'm calling this the most clutch. This is against the Dodgers. We are losing by one run, and DJ Stewart ties the game in the ninth. Ah, oh, I, I, I don't know if I can take any more. This has been an amazing back and forth game. Another save blown. This time it's Evan Phillips. And the Mets sent one long gone. Raised the apple. There's a good swing time in. There is a great swing result. Wow. Let's let's step out the box real quick. This is a whole new game. This is wild, bro. We still got a chance to end this one here in the ninth. Brandon Demo down 0-2. He's still trying to continue a 10-game, a nine-game hit streak. Goodness, let me let me look at the bullpen, bro. Like this this has been some game, man. Now I gotta warm Lucchese back up again. Because I'm pretty sure we're gonna have some left handers coming up if we don't finishes game in the ninth good foul off there by demo way to stay alive one two count this this has been a battle man 17 pitches in the inning for phillips Whew. there's that curve again the achilles heel of the mets today one ball two strikes oh my goodness that curve nearly got me again able to hold off right there two two count to Nemo. And Nemo not only keeps the momentum going for the Mets, but he extends his history to 10 games with a one out single. You see, he's celebrating with the first base coach. And the Mets now with the winning run on first base. Jeff McNeil going to step into the box. Let's see how Phillips approaches this A-B. He's now going to be up to 20 pitches after this one to McNeil. There's that curve again. High in the zone for a strike. We know that Brandon Nimmo has decent speed, but I am not taking the risk of running in this at-bat. And that's why, because Jeff McNeil puts a perfect swing on the ball. And out of Mets, with two men on. Nemo now in scoring position and the MVP 
for this 2024 season now has a chance to step up and end this game. He is our MVP so far this season. If it's not him, it's the man right after him, Pete Alonso. The Mets with a crucial, crucial opportunity here. Blake Trennan coming into the game. He has three holes. You see the ERA up there at 4.50. Let's see his pitches before we even get to this at bat. Sinker, slider, cutter, fastball. Starts us off with the sinker. Is going to miss low. Lindor, one for four on the day. He had a single in the fifth. Oh, I definitely should have given Chase to that, but it was a sinker. I'm not going to trip off that. Could have easily been a ground ball double play, but I like the location of that pitch. Mm, another sinker. I don't like the location of that one. Count now, 1-2. So after getting the count to 1-2 against Lindor, now Pete Alonzo. The man who, who he, he's the only reason we're even in this game at this point. Uh, tying the game with a solo shot in the eighth. This game could very easily be over if it wasn't for that clutch hit by Pete. He has another chance to make something shake right there. That was the pitch I wanted to. Slider high, we're late on that one. As you see the stat, the Mets have left eight base runners on base. The Dodgers have done the same. Bases are loaded for Pete Alonso. 1-1 one, one count. Ooh, that's a, that's a pitch we're not supposed to chase. But that is an excellent, excellent pitch right there from the Dodgers reliever. 1-2 count. No bench off the plate. Ball two. Good eye by Alonzo. Count is two and two. Oh, that sinker, sinker easily could have ended the game. Tying run 90 feet away. Pete Alonzo having a great at bat here. Stays alive by fouling off the slider. And now the count is full. It all comes down to this. Payoff pitch. Bases loaded. One out. Tie game. Bottom of the ninth. The pitch. And he walks him. <laughs> Peter Alonzo. <who, laughs> Peter Alonzo, man. He, he better get played the game. Peter Alonzo didn't have to swing his bat in the ninth inning. To win this game for the Mets, I'm going to keep clapping until these highlights are done. That is a comeback victory right there. No reason we, it should have been like that. But either way, Edwin Diaz picks up his first win of the season. The Mets pick up the, the first win of the series against L.A. Wow. Wow. What a game. That's one of the best games I've played in the show this year or the full decade that I've been playing this game before that. This was a great back and forth game. If you're just tuning in and watching this on Twitch, be sure to watch this game back on YouTube as Jason Hayward made this a game. Oh my goodness. I couldn't believe it when that one left the field. But DJ Stewart kept our hopes alive with a blast to center. And then Pete Alonzo down 1-2 in the count, if I'm not mistaken. Works the count all the way back and draws a walk. Bringing the game-winning run home. I I'm just at a loss for words, but let's wrap it up real quick. DJ Stewart is your player of the game. 3-for-3. Three three. He drew a walk, but he did an excellent job at the plate. 3-for-3, three three, two doubles, two RBIs, no RBI bigger then the solo home run in the bottom of the ninth that tied things up and gave the Mets a chance to win this game. Uh, we'll look at the uh, box score as the Mets were able to get to Shohei early, putting up two runs through four. 
But the Dodgers worked their way back as we look at the box score. Otani with his 21st double of the season. You see the RBIs. Otani, four innings pitch, gave up four hits, two runs, two earned runs, four walks, five strikeouts. But the, the problem with Otani in this game was his pitch total. He threw a lot of pitches in this game. As we look at the numbers for the Mets, man, look at this. Just a, First of all, great start from David Peterson. He should have uh, got his fifth win today. Brooks Raley got the hole. He did what he was supposed to do, pitching two innings. Did a very good job. Jorge Lopez blows the save. That's his third. So, like I said, he's had some trouble in that department. We're going to have to readjust his uh, role, potentially, if that problem continues. Edwin Diaz then blows the uh, the lead or the tie or whatever. But he does get the win. I'm not. That's all water under the bridge as the Mets offense able to muster together nine hits for the game. That led to five runs. Just enough to beat the L.A. Dodgers. Our first win against the Dodgers. We have been swept by L.A. coming into this game. Whew. I got to take a deep breath after that one. Might have to light up a doobie on that one. You understand what I'm saying? What a game for the Mets. That will wrap it up for us here at BYC Gaming. Episode 33 might have been the best one yet. What a performance by the Dodgers. What a performance by the Mets. I appreciate all of y'all for tapping in whether live or on the playback we appreciate all of y'all that watch even if you just tune in for a few seconds if you tune in for a few seconds i hope you were able to see the mets send the dodgers home frustrated again i go by the name of biz billa thank y'all for tuning in on a, on, on a brother's birthday at that either way we're gonna shut it down peace love blessing mets win shout out to grimace we here baby peace